What if I told you about a vanilla-friendly mod that adds more animals, blocks, mechanics, and even a custom biome to the game? You'd probably be pretty impressed, right? Well, let's take a look at Spawn. The Spawn mod is a vanilla-friendly fabric and forge mod for 120 that seeks to add some new critters to Minecraft. Currently, it adds six new mobs to the game, each with a couple of unique mechanics, blocks, and items to see. So let's take a look at the first ones by going sailing on the seven seas. The Anglerfish. The Anglerfish is found in deep ocean biomes and can be a useful companion. Giving it a glow ink sack, glowstone dust, or glow lichen will grant you five minutes of night vision. For exploring deep under the sea, this is incredibly useful. You can also take them with you with a bucket, making it possible to display them in your aquariums. Slaying them will drop the anglerfish as an item, however it's not particularly useful right now. While you can eat it and get night vision for a very brief amount of time, that's pretty much it. However, swimming along, let's take a look at the second sea creature added by the spawn mod. Tuna. Yep, it's Spongebob worst nightmare, because we all know what's gonna happen with these fish. Found in any ocean or cold ocean biome, the tuna look pretty derpy, but they make a great food resource. They can be bred with a variety of items, and a tiny tuna egg will spawn. And the best thing is you can pick up those eggs with a bucket and start your own tuna farm. And after some time, they will hatch into baby tuna fish. Pretty adorable. When you slay the tuna, you're going to get some tuna chunks. Now, while they can be eaten raw, you can also cook them. And the cooked tuna can even be turned into tuna sandwiches. Mmm, -hmm. pretty tasty stuff. Now, we just have to wait until the mod authors add canned tuna as well. And we're gonna have an interesting selection of seafood. Seahorse. Speaking of interesting though, the seahorse is a small passive mob that can be found in warm ocean biomes. And it, it doesn't really do much, but it does look pretty cute. And there's tons of varieties of them too. You can take them with you in a water bucket and make a cool new aquarium full of seahorses. And now I think this is enough swimming, let's get back to land and see what mobs await us there. The snail. Okay, listen, so the next mob it might just be my favorite. I'm talking, of course, about the snail. Not only does it look good in terms of style, I mean, look at it. It's so derpy, I, I just love this. They are slow to crawl from one block to the next. And when they look at you from the side, their eyes just sort of rotate. It's amazing. You can feed two of them mushroom stew and they will breed, spreading their eggs across the path they slobber over. And those eggs will spawn into baby snails after some time, which are even more adorable. Uh, but speaking of slobber, if you right click a snail with water, they will get wet as you can imagine, and this will make them spread their mucus on the ground for a while. Not only does the mucus slow you down, it can also be harvested and used as an important resource for some recipes I will get to later. Attacking the snail will make it retreat into its shell, giving it additional protection. It then becomes unmovable. You can still hit it though and damage it, but it will take a while. But then the question is, how do you get their precious shells? Well, you have to knock them off with a bow. This is by far one of the most creative mechanics I've seen in a while. I think this is just a really cool mechanic. The shells will grow back in time, it's just gonna take a while. Now equipped with some mucus and the snail shell, you can make a couple of things. Either you can make some blocks, namely the mucus block which acts similar to honey, except when it's set next to water because then it solidifies and loses its sticky ability. Or the big snail shell block or the snail tile blocks which can also be turned into slabs and stairs. So something for the builders as well. The last block that's possible to craft from the snail is the ghostly mucus block. They are craftable with four mucus blocks and a phantom membrane. When set down normally, you can just pass through them. But just like the mucus block, next to water, they solidify into a solid block. This is the potential to make some pretty unique hidden doors. Furthermore, you can take the mucus and the snail shell with some milk and kelp and make it into delicious escargot. The shell can also be used to make potted sweet berries. Pretty cool new decoration. The hamster. Next up is a new loyal companion, namely the hamster. It can be found in meadows or plains biomes and can be tamed with sunflower seeds. These seeds can be gathered from sunflowers spawning in the world. Taming a hamster has an incredible advantage, but only tame one at a time, because these hamsters, they will attack each other and they are quite territorial. You can make them sit by right-clicking, but shift right-clicking, well, that will bring up the hamster's inventory in which they can carry up to 12 stacks of items for you. Where are they stored? Well, obviously in its cheeks. Those will get larger as more and more items are added to their inventory. They will also gobble up any items that are strewn on the ground, as long as they still fit into the hamster's cheeks. These cute little critters are an awesome companion and an amazing addition to Minecraft. But now on to the last, but certainly not the least mob. Ants. 
The ants get their own unique biome called the Ant Gardens. This is where you can find multiple ants running around ant mounds and ant hills. You can also find them in the savanna, plains and the forest biome. Some ants might even make an old rotten log their home. And that's actually the first thing that this new biome brings. A new type of wood. Rotten wood to be exact. While it doesn't sound too appealing, it does come with some additional blocks any other wood variant also comes with. So possibly some more cool blocks for the builders amongst you. Ant mounds are brushable and might get you some valuable resources. But be aware that destroying them will actually get the ants to attack you, so keep brushing instead. And when brushing up ant mounds, you have a small chance of finding ant pupae. These can be used to spawn tamed ants. And they can also be used to make your very own ant farm. The ant farm block acts like a craftable ant hill, which ants will make their home. Now why would you go through the stress of getting yourself an ant farm? Well, in a 3x3 area around the ant farm, dirt will become ant mounds, leading to some new resources for you to farm. And the tamed ants are ferocious little fighters. They can also be colored different colors, which, well, it will make them attack each other. So once they're grown, you can have a full-out ant war. So who's going to win? The green ants or the blue ants? Honestly, this is a really cool idea. In addition to all of this, you can also find giant ant mounds as structures in the world. These are a great way of farming resources from the ant mound blocks. But this is by far not everything. Digging through the packed mud will reveal new chambers inside of the ant mound. This will help you find even more ant mound blocks to brush and even some treasures to be dug up. But be very careful about digging around. Destroying any ant hill or ant mound will make the whole colony attack you. And that's definitely not something you want to have happen. But when it comes to the treasures, you're sure to find some additional ant pupae as well, but you might also find one of the two new shards. The crown pottery shard or the spade pottery shard. Making some more of your own pots. Or perhaps for the more musically inclined among you, there's also a new music disc to explore. So as you can see, lots of things to do and lots to discover in the spawn mod. Final thoughts. The spawn mod adds several vanilla friendly features that are not only beautifully implemented, but also awesomely executed. The models, the ideas and the mechanics surrounding them make this a great mod able to be added into any mod pack. I'm extremely excited to see what the developers will come up with in the upcoming versions. And I'm also excited for you to take a look at this video right here. Hope to see you there. So yeah.